if you could, sorry, I'll pull that chair up and I'll give you my other chair so while one's speaking, the other one can sit. Um, I'm told that um, Buddy lost the toss, so he gets to go first. So let's welcome, I'm sure you read his column, his rally all the time, and a lot of you, Buddy Nevin. I left on April 20th, 2007. Uh, Hitler's birthday, I don't know what significance that is. It's not that I'm counting it. Um, I have a long democratic pedigree. My grandfather was a New York State Assemblyman, part of the Tammany Hall machine. My mother remembers Al Smith coming over to the house to eat dinner several times. My grandmother was uh, the president or leader or whatever they called them up there of a large democratic club in Manhattan. Uh, so my mother, who lived in Hollywood and uh, recently died, had a sign in her house in the window, that this house votes democratic. So uh, I bet you lost that though, in case she's gone. Um, the, um, the county has changed greatly. I started at the Sun Sentinel in 1973. I was uh, working on other papers down here before that. The county has changed greatly in that time. In the early time when I was here, the Republicans controlled the legislative delegation. Uh, there was significant Republican, the Republicans I believe controlled the school board, which at that time was partisan, and had a significant influence on the county commission. The, uh, obviously it changed around uh, quite suddenly in the 80s when uh, large numbers of Northeastern uh, retirees mainly moved into this community. Um, the, I've lived through it all, and it's very interesting. I'll be very interested to hear some of your questions about the governor's race. I have very uh, opinionated uh, uh, views on that and uh, a lot of the local races. So I will turn it over to Tony Mann now, and he can introduce himself. By the way, if you add up Tony and my uh, experience, we have about 50 years' experience covering uh, Florida politics. So. Buddy, what a way to play to the crowd with a Democratic background. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not going to do that. I don't have that uh, Democratic or Republican uh, pedigree. Um, I've been covering politics for a long time, uh, about uh, a dozen years now here in Florida, and before that for a long time in Illinois, um, where the politics is just as uh, rough and nasty and fun and entertaining as it is here in Broward County. Um, this is, a, this is a fascinating place uh, if you're interested in politics, as all of you know, because there's a lot going on all the time, and people really care. You all here, obviously, are pretty passionate about it, but um, it's something that we care about, too, uh, and that's why we enjoy writing about it and talking to people about it. So I'm really here to hear your questions, and um, I've been covering politics a long enough time that if I get a really tough one, I'll either ask Buddy to answer it or I'll just duck it the way uh, the way most politicians do. Um, 2014 is going to be a great year. I think Mitch was right. This is the year to kind of kick it off with something like this because it's going to be uh, fascinating to see what happens. And I think anybody that tells you that uh, he or she knows what's going to happen in November uh, has no idea what they're talking about. So uh, with that, uh, I'd really like to, I don't know how you want to do the Q&A of Buddy and I just Sure, stand up. Both and stand then. and move. Yeah, yeah, let's figure out. I'll take this out. What I thought we'd do is if you have a question, please stand. Um, almost any question is appropriate, almost. Um, and also designate if you want a particular person to answer it or both. 
and we'll try to keep try to keep the question short. And as I like to say on Jeopardy, for God's sake, put it in the form of a question. Okay? <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be here till Thursday, and there still won't be a question. So again, let me ask you to speak. Yes, Sheila, why don't you stand up? This is Sheila Franklin from Fort Lauderdale. She throws a heck of a party. Go ahead, Sheila. Uh, I read that uh, the editor of the Sunset Mill was also the head of a Florida Tea Party. So how does that affect the editorial policy of the Sunset Mill? I think on that one, we'll turn that one over to the Sunset Mill reporter, <laughs> Tony Mann. <laughs> This should be easy. That is easy. I don't believe everything you read. And that's, that's really <laughs> Especially in such that. So the, answer, the short answer was, no, that's incorrect. Yes, Ms. Coral Springs, please stand. Shout us your question. Um, I want to know your take on the Panthers and how to press that they want money. Right. Okay. We're going to have Buddy answer that and then Tony. Because Buddy might be able to be a little more opinionated. The question is, uh, what about the Panthers? Well, the Panthers have asked for a piece of, a bigger piece of the pet tax money to uh, basically the state. And although they claim they're not going to move no matter what, that's bunk, really. The, the fact is that the county is going to have to give them some money because uh, without, they, they threw down their Trump card today. Uh, They've got Live Nation, which does something like 80% of the other shows at the arena who say they'll leave if the Panthers leave. And that will leave an empty arena, which you'll be paying for. So uh, they really have to cut some sort of deal with the Panthers. Unfortunately, the county was outlawed uh, when they built that thing, apparently, with this uh, uh, contract. and. Uh, like so many things the county does, they didn't get it right. Uh, I think one of the biggest unknowns is just what the what the Panthers really want. Uh, you know, I don't know that it's money as much as it is the rights to develop a site that could be uh, potentially, if all goes the way they want, be a casino. That's where the real, real, real money is. The way they're pitching it is they would accept doing the development uh, of that area, but uh, that could be the thing that is really the sweetener for them, as opposed to cash. I think Florida will get a lot closer to being able to run a bingo game. Um, yes, let's go over this way. Please stand. Yes, ma'am, what's your question? The question was for Mr. Nevins about the governor's race, and she said something about an illusion or a deluge. Delusion. <laughs> I think uh, the Democratic Party has the best chance they've had in a long time to win the governor's race. And basically, this is more to do with the quality of the candidate on the Republican side than anything the Democrats have to throw at them. Uh, he has some of the worst poll figures and some of the highest negatives that I've seen in, a, in my entire career, frankly, this far into his term. Um, as far as the candidates go that they're going to be fielded against uh, in the Democratic primary, there's only one person who can beat Rick Scott, and that's Charlie Chris. <laughs> of this state, everyone, all 67, as a reporter, and north of here, Nan Rich couldn't get 20% of the vote. And she's too liberal, she's too uh, Jewish, she's too Broward, and frankly, she's a little too old. So, uh, and did I mention she was too liberal? <laughs> I think, I think Buddy really needs to tell us how he really feels. 
that would help. You know, we got the process here. I, hold on. Shh, shh. Tony wants to respond to that question too. So I don't know if he'll be his forthcoming. <laughs> Well, buddies in the opinion business these days, or can be in the opinion business these days. Uh, something else that he said at the beginning of his uh, answer is really interesting and really important. He said the Democrats have the best chance of winning the governor's race that they have had in a long time. Uh, I don't think you should take anything for granted. I think Rick Scott is going to be very, very difficult to beat. Uh, the economy is getting better, and just the way an improving economy helped President Obama, an improving economy is going to help Governor Scott, and he's going to have plenty of money. I think the Democrats will have plenty of money also, but uh, you should not assume that because Buddy was putting it positively that you have a good chance, uh, you shouldn't take it for granted or assume that you even have a, a, a great chance of winning. Okay, Let's, we're going to go from side to side. Um, hold on. Uh, yes. Shh. Okay, who would like to grab that? The question was their, their thoughts on the stand your ground law. As a backdrop, let me remind people that there was just a jury verdict, another ridiculous jury verdict. Uh, that was a case in which uh, this gentleman decided that these kids in a van uh, had loud music and decided to fire multiple, multiple, multiple rounds into the van. And his defense, because of Stand Your Ground, was, I thought they had a gun, which of course never existed. So that's the most recent backdrop to the uh, need for Stand Your Ground to change. But remember, this is Florida. Yes, yeah, so who wants to pick that up? Well, and uh, what Mitch said is exactly the thing to remember. This is Florida. It's not going to change. It's not my opinion about whether it's good or bad. Uh, standard ground is not going to be changed by uh, the Florida legislature. Well, let me say, before I go to the next question, let me say why. I'll repeat again. It's the Florida legislature. They control both chambers and they control the governor. If you have a governor, the governor has a veto pen. And that veto pen, whether used for a change your ground statutory adjustment or another bill where you could hold that hostage, the fact that one person has a veto power could affect all legislation, let's remember directly or indirectly. That's why the governorship is so important. Yes, sir, the gentleman in the back. I have a question for both of you. How do you think? The question was, how will medical marijuana affect the ballot? Um, you notice he's not standing real well. <laughs> oh, yes, who wants to take that? Or both, both. Uh, we actually might disagree on this one a little bit, uh, but in a, uh, I think it is going to have some effect at the margin in increasing a turnout among people who are probably more likely to vote Democratic. That's because, let's face it, in midterm elections, your party's turnout goes down more than the Republicans' turnout. That's a big part of why uh, you got your clock cleaned in 2010. Democratic turnout goes way down. This, I think, will probably help bring out some younger voters, some independent voters, people that are, at least you have a chance of getting uh, their votes for governor. And you know, if it's a very close race, a small number of votes could make a difference. Uh, and I also think that that's the only reason the question is on the ballot. And I think that's the only reason that uh, Republicans tried to block the thing from getting on the ballot was the potential impact on the uh, uh, election this fall. You have to remember also that the uh, that the polls and the uh, show support for this measure uh, overwhelmingly among Republicans uh, also. So it's going to be interesting to see. You see already the legislature running the other way from it. Uh, they, the Republicans don't want to oppose it openly. The governor says he personally doesn't like it, but he's not going to really do anything. Um, but yeah, I agree that it, it could bring out some independence and uh, 
marginal Democratic voters who uh, normally wouldn't come to the polls. Uh, we'll see. Yes, sir. Uh, David Franklin from Fisher Park is one of the greatest show. Okay, a lot of people, uh, when I bring up Charlie Chris's name, especially among women, you know, they're cringe. You know, yeah. but as the gentleman right said, Charlie Chris is the best hope for winning. Because we saw it in 2010 and would have to sink, where, you know, Democrats took it for granted and everything. What I feel would be good. We need a question, okay. sir. Okay, so question is do you think if um, Nan Rich is not chosen to be the Democratic nominee, she'd run as a third party independent? No. Um, I think I could save us some time and say I don't believe she'd run as a third party under any circumstance. I could be wrong, but I think we would all agree with that. Um, she's been a strong Democrat, and you know, I, if, if she was eliminated, I certainly don't think that would occur. Do you both concur with that? Well, also you can't because the primaries have to be qualifying period to become an independent candidate, so it couldn't happen anymore. Yes. Okay, let's go, Mr. Tamrek over here. Joel Davis, President of the Tamrek Southwest Democratic Club. There's a problem in this county and many other counties uh, in Florida uh, with uh, vacation rentals in residential areas. And uh, there was a law passed in 2011 that the state washed their hands to let municipalities from putting ordinances in. There are two bills in the legislature, I believe SB 356 and, and HB 307 to overturn that. Uh, do you think these could possibly be passed by the legislature this year? Well, that's certainly an inside baseball question. <laughs> are they sponsored by Democrats or Republicans? Yeah, uh, well, I don't know the answer. <laughs> As we used to say in game shows, you've stumped the panel, let me show you what you've won. <laughs> okay, next question. Yes, sir. Danny Halby from Pompano Beach. Uh, I'd like to follow up on what two gentlemen told us regarding the Nanridge candidacy. Let me ask you this. Uh, if a Democratic, a heavy Democratic vote comes out in Broward, can Nanridge win the nomination? Let's forget the election. That's the next step. But if a high percentage of Democratic voters step out for the potentially for the first female governor of the state, and the women come out in great numbers, can she beat Trump okay, sure. in the primary? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did Tony, would you want to amplify that? Can you explain why not? Shh. Oh, okay. I can't. <laughs> you know, you can, you, can come up with a, you can come up with a scenario that that, that, that could happen, but I think Buddy's going to tell us uh, in his view why it can't. Yeah, it can't because you're assuming that every person who goes to the polls in Broward is going to vote for Dan Ridge, and it's not going to happen. I would be willing to bet you right now that Charlie Crist will win Broward County. Yeah. And not only that, the only way Nan Rich, Nan Rich's campaign is going to be a little disingenuous from here on, in, here on in, because it's going to be fueled with Republican money from committees that are designed to tear down Charlie Crist right. for the general. And I know this because I've got a friend who's quite wealthy, who donated five figures to, to Scott already, and they've already come to this individual for money for a, for a committee for Nan Rich in the primary. It's going to be Republican money because she has none of her own money. So that might change it a little, but no, he's, he cannot, she cannot win, in my opinion. And if God forbid she does win, welcome to four more years. Yeah.